So, hey guys, welcome to this episode of Sounds Like NYC. Today's guest is Jack McGuire. Did I get quicker? Yeah, awesome. Is uh, Jack McGuire. And uh, yeah, just tell us a bit about yourself and how life has been uh, recently. Yeah, sorry about that intro. Daniel's just not used to doing them. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. You, you nailed it. Awesome. Uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm Jack McGuire. Um, I'm a producer and songwriter and composer sound designer i guess yeah wear a lot of hats do a lot of things um obviously before the pandemic like i was saying i was working in live sound for a venue called national sawdust in williamsburg um they're still doing some events um but i haven't really been working doing that kind of work for the past year so mostly i've been i worked on a play in october um that was for like one person at a time and then from there, I did like a little residency and I've mostly just been writing some new music for my like solo project. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Nice. I got the uh, best of both worlds, I guess. Yeah. Like what, what do you, what do you prefer doing? Like seeing your ideas come to life or someone else's? Uh, I, I like both. I mean, I, I really like to collaborate. And um, mm-hmm. the very first thing that I did when I got out of school is I like worked on a, on this physical theater piece that was like, there was no dialogue in it because they're sort of trained in mime uh, and physical theater aspects. So um, so basically they wanted music for the whole 60 minutes. So it was cool to like uh, work work between mediums. And it was, it was, since it was the first thing I did coming out of conservatory, I was like, like really excited and, and it was an interesting experience and pushed me into a place I never thought I would go, so. Right, so like, yeah, that's like really, that's like, that's, yeah, that's so like, what was like the process of you? Like, how long did you did you like have to kind of like make a, you know, score for that for that whole play? Um, I mean, I, I don't know, it, it might have been like a month or so. And the nice thing was I was performing it live, too. Oh. Um, and so like, I would just be at the rehearsals and I would just bring whatever stuff I could find. And there was like a little bit of Foley sounds that we were doing live too. So like I had like sheet pans that were like knocks on doors and, and mm-hmm. keys that I was jangling and stuff like that. And so, yeah, we, we did it. We did it maybe, maybe a month or so. And then like did a few performances. And then eventually in 2019, we kind of picked it back up and took it to the, to the Edinburgh Fringe Festival in Scotland and was able to do oh, nice. it. Yeah. Like 24 times in 25 oh. days. It was a lot but it was that's, cool that's crazy we actually had somebody who who performs uh frequently at the edinburgh oh cool uh, his name is uh walter deforest he's like a, a guy who uh hmm. his whole thing is uh pretending to be van gogh oh i yeah. think i think one of us went to uh that show maybe yeah, if yeah. he was there in 2019 mm-hmm. somebody went to a van gogh show that was sort of like like they I think they maybe drew some of their own stuff and he was like yeah exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so totally somebody it was our- uh, he was episode number two. Oh shit that's so yeah. cool <laughs> yeah yeah it's, yeah. Su- it's such a small world with all yeah. this stuff. yeah yeah that's wild that's really cool yeah so like I remember things sometimes <laughs> <laughs> look I didn't even know anything about that so that's like really cool wow. but um yeah so like 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 um. So I'm still very interested in kind of like that, that whole like theater aspect because mm. um, like- You know what I kind of want to get into though? Right. Like you guys worked at the same place, right? Yeah. How, how's this guy as a, you know, employee? <laughs> I mean, Dave, Dave, we were- David, 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 you remember how like, <laughs> see, I'm not sure. <laughs> you, I was going to ask, you should have asked that like during like the uh, no, but I, mission that we do. No, uh, I'm just curious. How how is this guy? I mean, I wasn't even there for like too long though. Yeah, <laughs> he was good. I mean, we're on the same level. I wasn't like his boss or anything. Yeah, like that. Exactly. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know, like as a as a what you call it, like a, a comrade. A comrade, yeah. yeah. We were all in it together. It was long days, and you started yeah. by cleaning toilets. So you know, yeah, there was. It, there's good parts to it too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but like we can like talk, talk. I just talk like putting you like that. in just like awkward positions. It's just so anyway, funny. Anyway, anyway, what, what, 
what I was gonna ask is that mm. um because I don't know if you've seen it but but I think you will like like it um but do you know the guitar company or the guitar pedal company J J H S uh mm -hmm. yeah so they actually recently did did kind of like a live stream uh hmm. theater or theater oh. event or like play about kind of like the early history of you know guitar pedals and stuff like that oh cool so up until then like i mean i've always known about you know obviously with like you know theater musical theater you know original scores blah 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 stuff like that but it's just kind of like interesting kind of like talking with somebody who has like actively been a part of that community and mm -hmm. done kind of like kind of like original scores so what do you think is kind of like one of the toughest things about creating kind of like an original score mm. for a for a play um, I think for me, it's like, uh, how much, how much do I like intrude into the scene? If that's a good way to say it, mm -hmm. because, uh, at least with the project where there was no, uh, dialogue and I was sort of, you know, I was sort of creating, there was also no, uh, no like set design or anything like that. It was just like, a, five people in a rope. And mm -hmm. so like that one, I had a little bit more. Uh, ability to like play and like really fill the space but in something like a like a more straight traditional play uh which I've done too is like I was also then working with a sound designer who was sort of placing the music that I made within the whole thing so it I, I think the ba it's the balance of letting the the actors create the the mood and then also like adding to that you know mm -hmm. so there's a there's like this sort of unspoken dialogue between me and the sound designer and what actually happens on the stage where if I if I add too much or I'm like oh no push it make it real loud I want this to be a huge moment you know I think I think you have to sort of know when to to take sort of a secondary role okay I see yeah yeah because I do have experience with that like kind of like I was a part of like an experimental music group mm. ensemble thing back in like college mm. and there's definitely yeah, it's definitely it was like it was it was definitely hard for me kind of like learning how to not always try no basically getting getting rid of your ego basically you know that's yeah. like thing. yeah yeah so I do understand kind of like you know yeah. kind of like the struggle of you know wanting to hold back or when you should like you know be more you know forward and stuff like that yeah but. So besides kind of like your like theater experience and stuff like that, like, I mean, we've, we've, we like talked about this back when we were like both like interning at that studio, but like with your like own music, it's almost, or like primarily it's kind of like you um, organizing yourself like a bunch of, like around like a bunch of instruments and kind of creating soundscapes and stuff like that. So like, how did you develop kind of like that style specifically you, um, of, of you sound designing and kind of like your like genre of like music? Um, I mean, I think it, I think it kind of came from like, I was similar to what you said about that experimental ensemble in school. I, I had a lot of time where I was doing like free improvisation um, and kind of working in that medium where it was kind of chaotic. And, and, and I originally I was sort of playing upright bass um, and I transitioned to playing like more electronic sounding things or, or like using samplers or things like that. And so it just sort of like came from totally free improvisations to let's try to figure out like a structure to this. And like, you know, then with electronic music, you can have whatever instruments you want. And I've just, now I feel like I'm sort of whittling it down to like a smaller amount of sounds that I want to use, yeah. you know, which is like a, a sample pad, maybe one or two synthesizers and like a, drums and vocal chops and then and so I think I think it's just a natural progression of like finding taking more and more time to experiment and you know there's a lot of times where I make something for a theater piece and then like I come back and I'm like okay I can still turn this into a song like mm -hmm. like this still works I like these kind of ambient soundscapes but like how do I then you know add a different narrative to it or something so yeah yeah so what are some of like who are some of your biggest like inspirations kind of like yeah. um within your music yeah i mean i think i think currently like the biggest one for me is probably av tear from uh animal collective 
Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, Animal Collective is good too. Um, just because I think that the approach is similar where they're, they're really coming from an improvisatory like background yeah. and trying to then structure it in some way that makes sense to them and maybe will be kind of foreign. And, um, and so I think, and, and that's what I, I really like to do. I think the more time I've spent this year sort of just practicing, you know, playing, like before I felt like I was always like trying to produce a, a, a song you know, and I wasn't always concerned about how do I play it or, um, or, or like w- ways to improvise within it. And now I've just been sort of practicing, you know, being able to just improvise within a show and get in, in between songs and stuff and make it a little bit more freeing experience as a performer. Cause I, I do miss, you know, the just totally free and kind of experience of performing. Yeah. Real quick, because I've just been looking at it the whole time. You have sort of a funky layout in your room. Oh yeah, totally. That's that's really really cool. Like, what? Wh- how long have you been in in New York for? Um, I've been in New York for uh since twenty fourteen. Uh-huh. Um, this I've only been in this apartment since last August. Okay. So this is new. Yeah, I have this loft bed, which is much higher than it seems. It's like nine feet up. So. Oh man. Uh, it's pretty close to the ceiling when you're up there, but it's all right. Then I have some, like all my, all my stuff, all my uh-huh. music gear is sort of here. Uh, then, you know, pegboard, which is, uh, a, a good investment. I just bought this clock thing. You can put it in the pegboard. So there'll be a little clock there. Um, cool. so yeah, it's a tight space. It's a weird space. So you yeah. have to like find ways to like organize it well, yeah. but this whole wall this way is like windows. So it's, it's very oh, light. So nice. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Where do yeah. you live? Like which part of the city do you live? I live in Bushwick. Oh, okay. Oh, cool. gotcha. Yeah. yeah. That's a really nice. Uh, I mean, I think that's sort of like kind of speaks to like the artists in New York city. You just have to make yeah. with what, or whatever you're given. Oh, you yeah, know what definitely. I mean? Yeah, yeah. So like just using that whole space yeah. you know, to, to really be able to, you know, make the art how, how you want it. I yeah. think that's really cool. Yeah, Thank you. Yeah. Speaking of like New York and performing, uh, was it like last week or two weeks ago that mm. you kind of had like a live stream performance like at Arlene's Grocery, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it was yeah. last Wednesday. Oh, I think yeah. today is like the final day that you can still stream it. If you buy a ticket, you can still watch. Nice. Um, but yeah, I played, I played Arlene's Grocery a couple times before. Mm-hmm. Um, and then in like December, they started reaching out to people and like, hey, you know, we're, we want to we still want to do music. We want to find a way for this to happen. And, you know, you've played here before. We'd love to invite you to do a live stream. Um, you can sell tickets. There'll be tickets that have donations, you know, so then Arlene's could get more donations and things like that. So it was really cool. And, you know, went in and they had three cameras set up and, uh, you know, so they, they did some crazy stuff with the video for mine um, because it was just me and the music's a little more experimental you know, at first it was like, it's going to just be like stage light, you know, it's just going to be me rocking out. They wanted me to put the piano sideways so you could see my hands. And I was like, not the vibe, just let's, uh." (laughs) so it became super dark and moody and like all the cameras are glitching out and stuff like that. It turned out really cool. Mm -hmm. So what was it like, you know, actually being able, obviously it wasn't like a traditional, you know, way of like performing and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, But like, how was it, you know, being able to perform, Mm -hmm. you know, perform to cameras (laughs) instead of fans. Yeah. Technically. Right. Well, yeah, but I don't think he'd be paying attention to it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So like, yeah. What was it like doing that kind of like performing again in like a more uh, in, in like actual venue? Uh, it was cool. It was, it was nice that they took care of all of the live stream stuff. You know, like I didn't have to worry about how is the audio sounding and how is, mm-hmm. you know, the cameras looking and shit like that. So it, it, it felt like a real gig. It felt like I was just there, you know, it was weird to not have anybody <laughs> there, you know, except for like two crew, uh, people, but they were super sweet. And, you know, it was still, it was still a lot of fun and, you know, uh, I got to watch it later and you can like read in the chat and like my mm-hmm. mom's in the chat and, and, and <laughs> things like that. I think, nice. I think, I think that's the cool thing too, is like um, the benefit of being able to have your gigs live stream is like my grandparents who wouldn't have been able to ever see this or, right. or you know, other people who don't live in New York um, mm-hmm. 
that are, were interested in it could watch it. So, I mean, that's sort of like what I'm what I'm thinking is like you know this is probably you know going to stay you know it, in some respect the like you know live streaming. I think it'd be a really cool idea for venues to like start Im- implementing this more. Like, what do you think they could do to just have the experience be better for yeah. both the artists and you know the audience? Yeah, I mean, it's it's crazy because it's not like a lot of the venues like had to add these cameras, mm-hmm. you know, after the fact. I mean, the venue that I worked at and the venue I worked at before that both had like multiple camera angles, you know, right. already built into their space. So like the ability to live stream was there. I just don't think people were thinking about it as much as a way to like really expand like the reach of your venue or yeah and it really helps artists too because then you know like another stream yeah and another ticket sold and Mm -hmm. you know a potentially a new fan for whoever the artist is especially if they're small you know it's tough to really like get the momentum so i think i think it's should stay i I, i'm a big fan of it oh no yeah definitely definitely like like, but what do you think that you know could have been done differently to Mm. sort of like you know make the experience a little bit better uh, I don't know. I mean, it was so it was so new still to me too that I was mm-hmm. like to to really just like I don't know play for an empty room or just play for cameras. <laughs> so like to me, I was like, okay, this is cool. I'm not like if I have to do it again, maybe I could think of of more. I mean, just just more flexibility on like maybe where the cameras are or something, or the mm-hmm. ability to like layer layer in animations or something. You know. Mm-hmm. you know that'd be cool yeah because that's sort of where my mind goes with that kind of stuff because if we have the technology again too mm-hmm. you know like we can we can really make it especially if your music is kind of trippy and psychedelic exactly. anyway. yeah. like just go a- absolutely wild with it you know mm-hmm. and so obviously then the venue has to have somebody who could do that or knows how to do that and or you bring your own person but you know i think I think just digging deeper into like what this technology can do for us, mm-hmm. you yeah, know? Yeah. I mean, I could definitely see like, you know, venues doing this in the morning and then just regular shows at night or something. Like oh that. yeah. Maybe something like that. Yeah. yeah. You know Brings in mean? more money yeah. and just like, yeah, that, that could definitely be kind of like the future of, you know, how like venues, cause you know, it's so, it's so unfortunate that, you know, so many venues had to shut down, especially like yeah. in New York city. So yeah. many, you know, famous and well-known mm-hmm. venues are like, gone and stuff like that so like yeah they maybe definitely something like that could be kind of like a way just to like constantly yeah, be like bringing in yeah. Money yeah. and probably yeah. getting me a job so i hope oh, it there happens. you go you just gotta learn how to <laughs> yeah. animate in real time and no then- not yeah. animate, but just like because like morning shifts i'll be down with like waking up like at five in the morning six mm. in the morning if it means i get i get some cash in my pocket yeah just live stream to like you know the other part of the world in the morning exactly. yeah the exactly world. no that, that could legitimately be a thing bro you know what yeah. i should i should run a venue <laughs> <laughs> I but, so like do you have any any like you know other kind of like performances lined up so far for the rest of the year because the city um um is like doing kind of like some like programs and stuff i don't yeah. know if you know with like you know outdoor performances that kind of like limited indoor performances and stuff like that mm-hmm. so like is there like anything like in the works or um not particularly um i mean i'm still just trying to find you know what the what the next step after this one is like mm-hmm. if, if there's another place i can live stream or if or if there's like a, another local place around my apartment that I can play at if they're doing like a lot out, outdoor thing. So, um, yeah, I, I'm not I'm not really sure what the next step is. Yeah. So, um, we found out that potentially the Edinburgh Fringe might be happening this year. If it does, we'll find out about that in May. So, nice. August I could travel again. And mm-hmm. um, but other than that, I mean. For the solo project, I I don't think so. I'm sort of just, I'm sort of just going back into writing and, and trying to find other, other ways to just like workshop it because I think that's that's the hardest thing. It's like you know when you can play a show all the time, you know you can you can continuously you know try out new improvisations or new modes of the song, and without that, I'm like, I'm like I'm not sure what how to how to really workshop these tunes and things. So. Yeah. Okay. So I think now will be a good time to actually listen to, you know, one of your songs. So is there like a song that you have specifically in mind that like you will want people to, you know, listen to? Yeah. um, 
there's one on my SoundCloud that's called Churches. Yeah. Um, that I wrote not too long ago, maybe maybe sometime last year. And yeah. I think that's that's really like the the one I'm I've been most proud of. You know? Nice. So. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Let's uh, play it right now. Boop. All right, so hey guys, welcome back to this episode of Sounds Like NYC. And we just finished listening to Churches. And um, yeah, tell us a bit about the, uh, I mean, I, I guess I guess now would be like a good time to kind of like use this time to kind of like talk about your like specific, um, you know, creative process, you know, what like software, what instruments, sounds, you know that sort of stuff that yeah that, that you use yeah so this one um i made with uh, a few different things the first is actually just like this like cheap casio keyboard i have yeah um there's like an electric piano kind of roadsy uh setting on it that actually sounds kind of good so that's sort of like the main thing in there even though it's like a 75 dollar keyboard um and that's sort of become pretty like standard in, in a lot of the stuff I, i've used um again it's similar to like what what we we're talking about about like being in new york and like having limited space like you have to make use of everything so like that's similar mm -hmm. to this like when i play it too i use like the sounds that are actually in it i use it as a midi controller like i try to get the most out of it as possible yeah um the other thing that's on that song the drum machine that's on there is actually uh uh, a real 808 that was at studio g oh nice yeah. and the one day i was just playing around with it because there was nothing to do and and uh just like recorded some samples of it but the the volume pot on it was like super dirty so like if at certain points if you hit if you just sort of like tapped on it it would like make the drum sound super crunchy and mm -hmm. so like the way that all those drums are kind of distorted on that track um is actually just naturally how that machine sounds oh wow nice that's really uh, cool yeah, and I was just like really inspired by that. And like originally that song was just sort of the pianos and it was like really spacious. And like uh, then a friend, I played it for a friend and he said, it sounds like it just needs like some drums underneath it and wanted to make it sort of more like a Rocky single. But then once I heard that that drum machine, I was, uh, I don't know, I just wanted to use that sound in everything. And so it's it's really become those, I think those two are like the biggest two, the, the kind of roadsy sounding cheap piano and that dirty drum machine are yeah. kind of the are kind of the two things that i use the most and they're yeah. just like accidental you know they weren't supposed to sound like that but they they do yeah making the song did, did even cost you over like 100 dollars. yeah it was super cheap so. yeah. there you go so i have to do it in new york exactly <laughs> so like what like doll do you use specific uh specifically so i use bitwig um it's it's like a people who worked at Ableton sort of made this offshoot one. Um, I've never heard of it before. Yeah. Yeah. I got it originally because I have one of those rolly uh, keyboards, those squishy keyboards. I don't know if okay. you're familiar with those. Yeah. Were, boards. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, and since what C board, what is that? It is it is a futuristic. It looks like controller. this. Uh -huh. yeah. And these are all squishy. So okay. like they, you know, like, it is piano keys yeah. right you can also like slide on it like this or move up and down it to change it's like that. super sensitive like super mm. yeah like, like yeah it's just like super in-depth super touch sensitive kind of like gotcha. piano yeah. playing so you guys MIDI control controlling. like control like how like what just, just by touch the fucking like how like if you slide up yeah hard or soft or if you yeah. like yeah. slide up you can open up a filter or something uh -huh. yeah you know um and and Bitwig was the program that came with with this uh, keyboard because they were sort of one of the first people to uh, uh, incorporate MPE uh, data, which is what that sends. It's it's not traditional MIDI. It has like five uh, parameters basically instead of you know just note on off and velocity. Mm -hmm. So it has it has the the slide, which is like timbre or something. You know the glide, which is sort of like kind of like a traditional like pitch wheel but you just do it, you know, horizontally. Um, and so that was sort of the program that um, came with it. And I just started using that one. And I think once you start using a certain DAW, like it's pretty hard to stop. Yeah, definitely. You, you get your workflow. And and I also, before that I had used a lot of Max MSP, which is like another like kind of sound design software 
that's like incredibly open-ended. Like it's just a, when you open it, it's just like a blank box and you drop objects and connect them with kind of uh, what looks like patch cables. And Bitwig is sort of similar where it has like this function where you can sort of build your own mod modular synthesizer within the program, which is kind of cool. And it's, it, the function of it is very similar to Max. Um, yeah. So. Nice, yeah. Like, where, where should someone like start off with this sort of stuff? Um, I think I started off in the wrong place because I, <laughs> I, I started off with just using Max MSP, which isn't really a DAW at all. It's really just like for creating sound design or mm -hmm. sound processing. Like it's really just like you are making your own like plugin in a sense. Mm -hmm. um, like you can build a reverb or you can build like crazy delays or crazy filter things. Um, and so the cool thing about Max is now it's owned by Ableton. So like if you build devices in there, you can, you know, use them as plugins um, through Max for Live. But I would probably say, you know, Logic is pretty, pretty straightforward. That's probably a good one to start with. Or, you know, I think if you want to be more performative, uh, like with your laptop, like use it as an instrument, Ableton is a good one too. Mm -hmm. um, Bitwig just has like some other more brainy things i think mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah. so and like instrument wise like mm. what are you thinking i mean honestly a cheap a cheap uh keyboard like this that has mm -hmm. some preset sounds and can be used as midi i think that's a good it's a good way to have you know a double function for it i'm sure you know like all the fancy nord keyboards and shit do it too but like this didn't cost me, you know, $1,400. Right. So, <laughs> uh, so I, I think, you know, I mean, or, you know, if you want to, if you're interested in string instruments, get yourself a guitar. That's, yeah. that's what I, I mean, I started playing bass when I was like 10. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so that was sort of my introduction to it. And I've just been playing forever. Yeah. So. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. No, I, I definitely get what you mean when you say kind of like um, once you like find yourself using like, you know, one DAW, one piece of software, it's definitely yeah. tough to kind of like move to, you know, something else because I use like Reaper and mm. like recently. So like all my guitars, they need to be intonated. So I haven't mm. been able to do any like guitar um related recording so i just mm. said you know screw it let me start producing kind of like synth mm. synth wave or like synth synth wave inspired music yeah. and like obviously if it's something like that you know any person would like tell you just use ableton um, but between the price and then also between kind of like me just knowing reaper as like my mm. main me me being more familiar with like reaper you know i just decided hey let me do my best to kind of like produce electronic music mm -hmm. with this obviously like like you know any like dog can you know make any type of music but yeah. obviously Ableton is kind of like known for being super intuitive mm -hmm. in that sense of like making electronic music but you know I I got this free sample pack from a guy mm -hmm. that we had on before and stuff like that and just you know I used um you know kind of like free free synths and you know VSTs and stuff like that and like for my like first attempt at like really trying to make electronic music I think it went like pretty well all things considered but yeah. like yeah so I definitely understand what you mean at, at the uh, end of the day like it's not the tool it's just mm. like it's just like the knowledge it's of the, the person not the yeah tool. that's mm. what I learned from my WandaVision mm. there was yeah. it you said watches. Watched, I oh, you haven't watched it either? Oh, okay. Yeah. Like, I won't spoil it, but yeah. Yeah, but at the it end of the day. It was all a dream. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, at yeah. the uh, end of the day, it's just about your, like, your, like, personal knowledge. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think that, and I think that also, you know, you'll, you'll find a lot of ways that you do something instead of, like, if you just only ever watch, you know, like, how to make this type of music on YouTube or something like that. Mm -hmm. Like there's nothing wrong with that, but I think, you know, going at it with a different software or going at it your own way will produce more interesting results. I, oh, I yeah. you know, yeah. so I, yeah, I'm, I'm super into like free uh, plugins and shit like that. I don't, I've only ever paid for one plugin and Same. Like, you know, like <laughs> it, this shit's expensive, you know, yeah. you can, you can kind of, what are they run you like a hundred bucks each or what? 
some of it, them I it mean, depends on like on like what it is really because like spend more than 100 bucks on a plugin david david mm. you don't you don't Ooh. you don't you don't like understand the half of it like they're, they're like so it gets hard. expensive like like it gets it like it's it, like, yeah it's i mean it's worth it if if you have the money but like you know somebody like me like i'm still looking for a job and stuff like that and mm. i've and i've kind of made it made it made it a point for me to kind of like get the most music i can free. using as much free yeah yeah for yeah. sure and like and like, you got you know, it yeah, yeah. So be as uh what you yeah. call it, frugal as possible yeah exactly. exactly and i've like produced like and there's so many free even like 10 years ago like mm-hmm. the like the amount of like quality mm-hmm. free software yeah compared like 10 years ago to now is absolutely insane like you could produce a full record only using completely free stuff and again yeah. it's like about it's about the knowledge of the person more than like the software itself, because right. with like a with like a lot of these like paid stuff, like they're great, kind of like the slate, like you know, package, yeah, you know, native instruments, stuff like that. You know, they're like fine crafted and tuned, and you could like get the best sound possible out of those things in like a snap. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like, you know, it's just all about you know how much like money you have like at like at the uh like at the yeah. end of the day but like yeah i've 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 made it a point to like get as much music possible for as cheaply as possible and it's been working that's great smart. for me yeah yeah that's, yeah. How, that's how you can make the most music right yeah have and the, the most money yeah. yeah yeah exactly right. yeah yeah but uh i mean speaking of which like how do you think like are you like actively trying to you know like you know as like a musician as like a creator you know everybody has their like lows you know peaks and valleys and stuff like that Mm -hmm. so do you find yourself now in kind of like a peak or a valley and like when Mm -hmm. you when you like are in a peak like how do you try to kind of like re re reinvent yourself Mm. yeah i mean i think i think right now i'm in like a weird plateau like i just because it's hard to see the the future of it you know um but yeah, I mean, I, I definitely think when when you're sort of when you're sort of dipping down for a bit and, and unsure about, you know, because everybody's going to have some some doubts of, of like, can you know, can you really do this or, or like, is this music any good? I think I think, you know, that's that's really the time to just like step away from all of the numbers and stuff, because, uh, you know, every every friend that you have that has some shit on Spotify checks their numbers and everything like that. Mm. So I think I think just, you know taking a step back from all that stuff and just like, you know, really trying to make the music that, that you like, and that, you know, feels good to you. You know, um, I think uh, somebody said it to me so long ago, like a, a teacher that I had a lesson with, and it was always like, you know, if you just keep doing what you love, like the money or like whatever will come because people will see that you really love it. And so like, if you're trying to chase after like the, the, super polished sound that you can get because oh i just need that plug-in to get the that that better sound or something like that i think you're always going to be a little unsatisfied so i think i'm pretty you know happy with the music that i've i make now and you know and maybe that'll change you know maybe i'll have to take a take a turn and and try to make something else uh you know if, if i hit a low point but i mean i think that i think there's not really a secret to it just if you're doing what you love and you just keep at it yeah so yeah definitely definitely yeah nice. so like i mean is there like anything that you want to like kind of uh end off the podcast with um i don't know i mean i i don't i don't like feel free to plug in anything you want to plug in, like even like friends and stuff like that. We don't care. Oh, okay. <laughs> these, these is like you can use the time however you want. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I guess then I guess then yeah, if I if I'll have to if I will shout out a, a couple of people that I'm, you know, inspired by or have worked with. Um a really great uh record is called By Keeping Spring and it's by uh Motika. He's mm-hmm. a friend of mine. I played a little bass on that record and um and I actually played in his live stream at Arlene's Grocery as well. He's a great nice. songwriter and producer and kind of like a band leader in a way, nice. like kind of like a big band, like he was sort of directing us and, and a really fun way to play. Um, there's also a friend who lives in this building with me who I've been uh, working with. Uh, we'll probably release an EP sometime. He's nice. a rapper. His name is Manic Phase. And uh, he's got a lot of stuff on 
Spotify and whatever streaming thing. His newest thing is called MP3, uh, and he's great. And we've been he, we've been making a lot of kind of weird experimental rap stuff together. And cool, nice. Really excited about that. So maybe be on the lookout from either one of us. Yeah, maybe we'll have him on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, more. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. We could just like, hit, yeah, just yeah. like send us their like Instagram, sure. social media, whatever, and we could definitely like hit them just up. in the same room. Just everything's the same. Yeah, everything's yeah. just like come through, just, just like to your place. Just have yeah. Jack like sleeping on top. Yeah, exactly. I'll just be hanging out. I mean, this is where we do it all. I mean, it's always we're always just hanging out in here, and 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 that's been a great project. That's been a, a ton of fun. And again, it's like something to keep you motivated and keep you going. You know, yeah. I I've never produced for anybody else like that. Um, so yeah it's been a ton of fun and i think what we're making is pretty special nice so, um, nice. Looking i forward think to if it. anybody else to to shout out yeah. um all the people you like <laughs> all the people i like there's another there's another group who are also like collaborators of mm-hmm. mine who worked um with me in some theater stuff and they're called ball slash loon uh oh, nice. they have they have some stuff on spotify they have some stuff on Bandcamp nice uh, they're kind of like experimental pop trip hop kind of fun fun nice things. um we played on the streets of edinburgh together nice. <laughs> <laughs> with a little portable speaker and like a laptop set up and yeah and it was fun uh yeah. and made some money for beer they're great uh, <laughs> <laughs> um i've really been into this band called dirt buyer which i think is also in uh bushwick mm-hmm. and uh hayden who works at studio g i think makes that record and it sounds super oh great. cool yeah yeah uh nice. hayden teichhurst or something i don't know how to say his last name <laughs> but uh but he mixed it but the out but i think it's just called dirt dirt buyer ep by dirt buyer yeah uh, it's great it's like uh uh kind of soft moody rock i guess i i don't know how to put it but it's yeah. really good nice. um anyone else to yeah, I think I think I think that's it for for the local folks. I mean, there's a radio show that's been really nice to me and has played a couple of my uh, songs called Local Bops. It's on mm-hmm. it's on K Piss, which is uh, <laughs> here in Brooklyn somewhere. And the the show Local Bops is always on Tuesday nights, like ten o'clock to eleven. They play yeah. all like local things. You can submit your songs cool. and get played. And oh, they're he's nice. a super nice guy. Yeah, and so they've played they've played a couple of my my tunes here and there. So definitely recommend checking out that radio show too. Oh yeah, definitely, awesome. definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just support awesome. the support the Brooklyn things. Yeah, there definitely you know. gotta support local answer. artists. It's yeah. great, you know, because it's probably like tons of just like different like networks of just like small artists and stuff like that. And yeah. You just gotta like and and I guess we're like doing our best to kind of like discover all of those networks and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. It's like searching for Pokemon. There you go. At the end of the day, yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. All right. So uh thank you guys for watching this episode of Sounds Like NYC. Uh see you in the next one. And thank you so much again, Jack. Thank you. Thanks awesome. for having me. Yeah.